Hi YouTube, I'm Ayman. Welcome back to one of my auto repair videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to lead the engine cooling system for a 2004-2009 Toyota Prius. Uh, you would need to do this if you drain the radiator uh, or you replace uh, a, a part involved in the cooling system. And of course, after you refill the coolant. We also have a separate video on how to refill the coolant if you don't know how to do it, so go check that out and let's continue. Before we begin, I just want you guys to note that Toyota Priuses are notorious for being difficult to get air bubbles out of the system. And there are two main hotspots for where air bubbles appear in this Toyota Prius. So uh, first off, which is the one we're going to be focusing on, on in this video, is the coolant heat storage tank. Uh, that's where all the that's where about three quarts of uh, coolant is stored. And on this diagram, it's right here. The second hotspot is the heater core, which is in the back over there. Uh, that's what we're going to be uh, covering in the second video. And finally, the rest of it is just a system of uh, hoses and the radiator that, that might have air bubbles in them. But the heater core and the coolant uh, head storage tank are the main ones. Our overall goal in the end is to make sure that all the air bubbles that are in the coolant heat storage tank are forced out. And in order to do that, we have to activate the coolant heat storage pump. And in this diagram, it's not accurately depicted, but it's actually right below the coolant heat storage tank. So by activating this coolant heat storage pump, which I'll get to later on how to do that, we're going to be able to circulate the coolant around the system. And as we're doing that, we're going to refill, we're going to fill some coolant uh, in here, probably about to here. So I'll do that as we're speaking. And as the coolant is circulating around the system, any air bubbles that are, are in the coolant will pass by this and any air bubbles that are in the system uh, in the coolant will come out uh, through here and the coolant that's already in this funnel will take the place of that air bubble so I have to see where it is okay that's a good place all right so now we're gonna get on how to actually activate the pump and that is by jumping the relay now this is the relay the relay is actually mounted on the windshield cowl, which is normally up here, but we removed it. We actually have a separate video on how to uh, uh, remove the windshield cowl, so go check that out if you need to. But once we get the relay off, we're going to take this off, the, the cover off. And we're going to see that there's uh, four relays, and this one right here is the relay corresponding to the uh, coolant heat storage pump. So we're going to take this off. So when you look at the relay, we can see that the, the spot of these two uh, copper pins is where we should jump it. So, so this hole right here, and this hole right here. So in order to uh, do that, we're going to take our multimeter. And normally, uh, the, the wires are arranged like this so that we can measure uh, resistance and current, so voltages and ohms. But instead, we're going to move this uh, wire to this section so that we can measure amperes which is how much current is being drawn. So now, uh, when we do that, I think it's, uh, actually, no, that's not it. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's 20. So when we put it up to the, we put this relay right here so that we don't lose it. All right, so now we're gonna do next step. We're gonna jump the pump. And uh, just precaution, when you're jumping the pump, don't do it for more than 30 seconds at a time. And for us, we're going to stay on the safer side, just in case we don't break the, uh, just so that we don't break the pump. We're going to do it at most 15 seconds. So first, we're going to stick both uh, pins uh, into their slots. Uh, this one right here. So right here. And put this green tape just so I don't put it in the wrong hole. You can hear the pump is working. Now we can detect what the amperage is. Mm. Let's look. So it's already been five seconds. It has like 415, 4.15, 4.12, 4.13, 4.09, 4.8. Yeah, around around 4.10. All right, I'm gonna let go of it so that we don't break the pump. Oh, so you can see right here that air bubbles have came, came, come out of the system because we jumped the pump. All right, so you, could, you just saw there that it took about 10 seconds before air bubbles start, started coming up. And that's why we wait intermittently before uh, uh, pu jumping the pump again. Because we don't want the, first, we don't want the pump to burn out. 
But second, because these air bubbles are still traveling through the system, we want to wait until they're all out before we uh, jump the pump again. So when we analyze the amp here, uh, usually you should fluctuate, you should get around a consistent uh, 3.999 or 4. At least that's what we got. So you saw that we were at a consistent like 4.10. So there are two there are two things that might go wrong. So if it's too low, that means there's too many air bubbles. So if you have like two or like three, that means that means you have too many air bubbles. And also, if it fluctuates uh, too much, so if you go from like two point five to three to two point seven to three point nine to three point six, then if it's fluctuating constantly, then that means that you have a lot of air bubbles. All right, so now we're going to jump the pump again to see if there's any air bubbles that come out again. Um, I don't think there was going to be any because since we use the air lift, it pretty much almost uh, mitigates any air bubbles. So, oh, that's not the right one. Make sure you put it in the right hole. Um, oh, so you can see air bubbles come out instantly. Five seconds. Ten seconds. 15 seconds all right so when we look at the, the front of the car you can see that the coolant heat uh the coolant heat storage tank is going to be on the lower end and the neck is going to be on the higher end so what we're trying to do is with the help of gravity we're trying to make the fluid the actually the liquid uh, because fluid is both liquid and gas we're trying to make the liquid go to the uh lower end and the gas Go on the higher end and because gravity helps us with that the air bubbles should escape easily so now the pump has cooled down far enough we're going to try it again and we're going to keep watching the uh multimeter and the air bubbles four point ten yeah Hovering around that. And uh, I think we're good. Alright, so let's take a look at this funnel. Lift it a bit. You can already see that some of the coolant has already gone down. So we're going to refill this. Make sure that's tight. And then we're going to uh, jump the pump again. Okay, there we go. So now we're going to jump the pump again. And let's see if anything changes. What we're really aiming for is 3.999, because that's what has always uh, appeared. Uh, Alright, so it looks like we gotta fill a bit more, because it looks like the radiator took in a lot of it. Alright. So let's hope for the best when we jump this pump. Just making sure. Okay, I see I heard there's already an air bubble, I guess. <laughs> Where are these air bubbles coming from? Okay. So let's jump it. Oh, so there's already air bubbles coming out. It's at a steady 4. Point, actually, not a steady, but somewhat close to 4.15. Now it's going down. That, ooh, 4.07, 4.08, 4.05, oh, so we're getting closer to 3.99, I'm gonna let go of it right now so we can let it cool down, but looks like we're approaching what we want, and while we're waiting for this pump to cool down, let me just talk about um, this topic right here, so this is the bleeder valve, and I've seen some YouTube videos that say that when you're bleeding the, uh, Cool, uh, the coolant heat storage tank to open the bleeder valve so this is an aftermarket part so it's not a good uh, demonstration but this is what the bleeder valve actually looks like so it has this protrusion coming out of it I just want to say that it's not necessary to uh, open the bleeder valve or loosen it when you're trying to uh, bleed the coolant heat storage pump uh, tank because when you're running the pump uh, with the, the uh, bleeder valve open then air will get sucked in and will get introduced to the system. And that's not what we want. Actually, opening the bleeder valve isn't for bleeding the uh, storage tank. It's actually for bleeding the heater port, which is our next step. 
All right, so there haven't been air bubbles for about five minutes now. So now we're gonna uh, jump the pump for around 20 seconds to see if we can get it down to 3.99. So, let's put it in here. All right, some air bubble, one air bubble. 4.19, 4.18, 4.17. Four point thirteen, four point nine, uh, four point oh nine, four point oh four, and I think it's about to be twenty seconds, but yes. Okay, so I don't want to risk it. Okay, so we finally got to three point ninety nine, uh, just a split second before we get tuck it out. So I think we reached our goal. So now we're gonna be able to turn on the engine. All right, so at this point, I think we're done with uh, bleeding the coolant heat storage tank. Now, uh, before you turn on the engine, you wanna make sure that you reconnect the uh, cable that's down here. I already pointed out uh, before. And you also want to put the relay back. Uh, the, next, the next video is gonna be on how to bleed the heater core, which is in the back. Uh, so that's the next step, so go check that out uh, after this. If you watched my previous video on how to drain the system, you would know that I disconnected a certain cable here that's connected to the coolant heat storage tank. Uh, just know that for our purposes right now, we don't have to reconnect it. However, after we finish bleeding and before we start the car, we have to plug this back in or else it'll throw an error code. All right, so I guess while we're here, I'll just uh, touch base on what exactly the coolant heat storage tank does. So, especially in winter, when you're first uh, uh, starting the car, the, the coolant heat storage tank, uh, it will have hot coolant inside of it. So if you're working on this car with it still working, uh, make sure not to touch it because it's gonna be hot. It's gonna send hot coolant to the engine in order to heat it up to its optimal operating uh, temperature. And after that, it will then redirect it to the heater core if the cabin's also cold. Uh, so the heater core also heats up the cabin. Uh, and then it will redirect you to the system. When you turn the car off, uh, all the hot coolant in the system will be redirected to the uh, coolant heat storage tank. And you may have noticed this if you're a Prius driver. When you turn off the engine, there's a, a bit of a noise. And that noise is the pump actually taking in all of that hot coolant. I'm Aiman, and I just showed you how to get air bubbles out of the coolant heat storage tank which is only part of bleeding the entire system. Our next uh, video, and I already mentioned this, is uh, bleeding the heater core. So be sure to check that out in the next one, and I'll see you there. So I'm Aiman, thanks for watching. Please like, our comment, subscribe, look at other videos on I and Aiman, especially these Toyota Prius videos. Uh, like I said, in all, at least all of my closings, we're doing a lot of uh, videos on these actually, because we have to fix uh, a lot in this car. We just got it from a friend, so there's a lot of things that we've already done, like replace the thermostat, the radiator. So be sure to check those videos out as well, and I'll see you there. Signing out. Peace.